Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on Basic Network Concepts, Part 1. Today we're going to be talking about encapsulation and modulation. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin this session. We're going to begin by talking about encapsulation. The Open Systems Interconnection Reference Model, or the OSI model, uses a layered approach to enable disparate devices to be able to communicate effectively. During the communication between two devices or nodes, each layer is only responsible for being understood by the corresponding layer on the other device. As data flows down from the application layer through to the physical layer, it is encapsulated at each layer with information to help the corresponding layer at the other end of the communication line understand what is happening. As the data is received at the other end, it is de-encapsulated or unwrapped as it moves up the OSI stack by the corresponding layer. Let's talk about how encapsulation works. The application layer begins the process by sending data that is encapsulated or wrapped with application layer control information to the presentation layer. The encapsulated data is called a PDU or protocol data unit. The application layer PDUs are segmented by the presentation layer with each segment being encapsulated by presentation layer control information. They are now presentation layer PDUs. The process of segmenting and encapsulating continues down through the OSI stack until it is transmitted as bits by the physical layer. The receiving physical layer passes the bits to the receiving data link layer, which reads the data link layer PDU information and then de-encapsulates and desegments it, sending the new packets to the network layer as network layer PDUs. The process of de-encapsulating and desegmenting continues up the OSI stack until it is received by the application layer, where it is finally fully de-encapsulated and fully reassembled. This encapsulation and de-encapsulation allows differing systems to be able to communicate together effectively. With that covered, let's move on to modulation. The physical layer of the OSI stack is responsible for transmitting bits of data across some form of media. So it literally is responsible for transmitting zeros and ones across the media, like a cable. The question arises, how does the physical layer transmit the data across the media? The bits of data are modulated or encoded by the physical layer and placed on the carrier signal of the media which carries the modulated data onto its next destination. The carrier signal can also be referred to as the carrier channel. Once the bits are received, they are demodulated or unencoded by the receiving physical layer. A carrier signal is a standard waveform, usually in the form of a sine wave, that is used as the base carrier of another input signal. A sine wave is a mathematical curve that is represented by a smooth repeating oscillation. Now let's define modulation. Modulation is the process of varying one or more properties of a carrier signal with an input signal, usually for the purposes of conveying information. Modulation can be used to encode digital network traffic onto media that uses a digital carrier signal as in using an ISDN connection between two networks. Modulation can also be used to encode a digital signal onto a media that uses an analog carrier signal, as in digital network traffic traveling over the public switched telephone network, or PSTN. Multiplexing is often used with modulation. Multiplexing can be used to increase the number of modulated signals that can be placed onto a carrier signal. So let's talk about multiplexing, and I don't mean your local movie theater. The type of carrier signal will determine if multiplexing can occur. A baseband carrier signal cannot have multiplexing occur as the modulated signal will consume all of the available frequency or channel width. Multiplexing can be utilized on a broadband carrier channel as each modulated input is assigned a portion of the channel width 
of the carrier channel. Multiplexing can use one of two methods to weave streams of modulated signal into the carrier signal. There's frequency division multiplexing. This is the process of mathematically dividing the carrier channel frequency into multiple segments and assigning the results to modulated input signals. Then there is time division multiplexing. This is the process of mathematically dividing the carrier channel width into multiple time segments and assigning the time slots to different modulated signal input streams. It's time to talk about the difference between a baseband and broadband carrier channel. And we're going to begin with baseband. A simple definition of baseband is a stream of data that is sent over a carrier channel as a digital modulated signal. The digital signal will take all of the carrier signal's available frequency or time. While the modulated input does take all of the carrier channel's available frequency, the communication is bidirectional. It can flow back and forth. A simple definition of a broadband carrier channel is a stream of data that is sent over a carrier channel as an analog modulated signal. The analog signal will be assigned a portion of either the carrier channel's available frequency or time. While the modulated input doesn't take all of the carrier channel's available frequency, the communication is not bidirectional. For two-way communication to take place, multiplex channels must be created. That is a channel for each direction. Now that concludes this session on Basic Network Concepts Part 1. I began with encapsulation and I concluded with modulation. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope you watch another one soon.